dark If we gotta live in the dark We will live in the dark Oh, you see me dying in the light I will live in the dark That's where the revolution will be complete when the language is perfect The secret is to move from translation to direct thought to automatic response No need for self-discipline Language coming from here, not from here the internet exploded last week after recording between MA student and teaching assistant Lindsay Shepard and a social justice tribunal at Laurier surfaced. Her crime? She played a five-minute clip of Jordan B. Peterson discussing policies towards gender-specific pronouns on the agenda with Steve Pakin on TV Ontario last year. Peterson is an outspoken critic of Canada's Bill C-16, which criminalizes wrongthink when it comes to using pronouns specifically with regard to transgender Canadians. For clarification, Jordan Peterson is a tenured professor in the Department of Psychology at the University of Toronto. Shepard used clips of this debate from the public broadcaster TV Ontario about gender neutral pronouns. It was part of a first year communications class and it included controversial University of Toronto professor Jordan Peterson. So and I don't so like under, these made-up words, Z and Zer and that sort of thing. Okay, what about, they're not all made-up words, quote-unquote made-up yeah. words. For example, uh, they is one of them, yeah, to, but to we, speak to an individual yes, as they. Right, but we can't dispense with the distinction between singular and plural. At least one student complained about Shepard's use of the video, and she was accused of violating the university's gendered and sexual violence policy. She met with her supervisor and another professor where, among other things, her use of the video is compared to airing Nazi propaganda. Free speech does not exist here. Apparently, playing this video is problematic. The university received a complaint from one or more students in her tutorial. The tribunal refused to even clarify what the nature of the complaint was. The tribunal consisted of Nathan Rambukana, Shepard's supervisor, Herbert Pimlot, her program coordinator, and Adria Joel, who is, apparently, acting manager of the Gendered Violence Prevention and Support Program at Laurier. Here is just a small sampling of the conversation. This is basically like playing, not to kind of do the thing where everything is kind of compared to, to, to Hitler, but this is like neutrally playing uh, a speech by, by Hitler or, or Milo Yiannopoulos from Gamergate. This is the kind of thing that departmentally, in terms of like critical communication studies and in terms of the course of what we're trying to do, is diametrically opposed to everything that we've been talking about in the lectures. Was this one of the reasons that you wanted to do this? Because it was like a, a reaction to the lecture content? And the... No, we were talking about gendered language and I was asking them to structure sentences using say or using his or her. And then we talked about the societal context of it. Okay. So I don't get why I'm being seen as transphobic <laughs> by yeah. virtue, by proxy of me just, just saying, just stating, just exposing people to an idea. I, I don't get how that label is not attached to me. I really don't. It's more about the effect rather than the intention. If that, like, obviously that wasn't your intention, but nevertheless, it disturbed and upset students enough. So everything's about those students who are disturbed. Everything is catered to them. But when they leave the university, they're going to be exposed to these ideas. So I don't see how I'm doing a disservice to the class by exposing them to ideas that are really out there. And I'm sorry I'm crying. I'm stressed out because this to me is so wrong. <laughs> so wrong. Can I mention the yeah. gendered violence, um, gendered and sexual violence policy? Yeah, please. So under that, um, it does gendered violence doesn't just include sexual violence, but it also includes um, targeting folks based on gender. Um, so that includes transphobia, biphobia, homophobia, all those sorts of things are protected under the policy. And so those are things that Lori has um, upheld as values as well as the Ontario Human Rights Code. Um, and so those are things that we're responsible for. Um, uh, not um, impacting our students in that way and not um, not spreading transphobia in that way. Okay, so the, the, what I have a problem with is I didn't target anybody. Who did I target? Trans folks. How? 
by telling them ideas that are really out there, by telling them that, by telling them, really? It's, it's not just telling them in legitimizing this as a valid perspective, as this is another valid perspective. In a university, all perspectives are valid. That's not necessarily true. In well, this, this is something that's being debated in current society, and I don't feel the need to shield people from what's going on in society. Like, might have been seen as problematic by, uh, by some of the students, maybe even threatening. Um, I don't, I don't see how someone would rationally think it was threatening. Um, I, I could see how it might challenge their existing ideas, but for me, that's, that's the spirit of the university is challenging ideas that you already have. And I don't know who this came from. I would be interested to see the original complaint or complaints because like, I don't really have any context like as to what exactly their problem was. Am I supposed to comfort them and um, make sure that they are insulated away from this? Like, is that what the point of this is? Because to me, that is so against what a university is about. So against it. I was not taking sides. I was presenting both arguments. Okay. So the thing is about this is if you're presenting something like this, it, uh, you have to think about the kind of teaching climate that you're creating. And this is actually, these arguments are counter to the Canadian um, Human Rights Code. Uh, ever since, and I know that you talked about um, C16, ever since this passed, it is discriminatory to be targeting someone um, due to their gender identity or gender expression. So bringing something like that up in class, not critically, and I understand that you're trying to like... It was critical. No. I, I introduced it critically. How so? Like I, as in, like I said, I, it was in the spirit of debate. Okay, in the spirit of the debate is slightly different than being like, okay, this is this is a, like a problematic idea that we want to maybe we want to unpack. But that's but, taking sides. Yes. Like it's taking sides for me to be like, oh, look at this guy. Like everything that comes out of his mouth is BS, but we're gonna watch anyway. Okay. So I understand the position that you're coming from and your positionality, but the reality is that it has created a, a, a toxic climate for some of the students. A couple of weeks ago, this teaching assistant at Wilfrid Laurier got a hold of me. Her name is Lindsay Shepard. Um, she, she showed a video clip of me that was taken from TV Ontario's The Agenda. She was informed that merely by showing the clip taken from this televised uh, program I mentioned, that she was legitimizing Peterson's views about genderless pronouns. She's also now been told that she has to submit her lesson plans to her supervisor in advance that he may sit in on her next few classes and that she must not show any more controversial videos of this kind. Uh-oh, retard alert. Retard alert, class. Do you believe in a flying spaghetti monster too, bubblehead? Told her that by showing the video to her Canadian communication in context class, it was basically like neutrally playing a speech by Hitler. But this is like neutrally playing uh, a speech by, by Hitler or, or Milo Yiannopoulos from Gamergate. Shepard recorded the meeting and released the audio, and that's when this story became national news. On Tuesday, the school's president apologized to her, saying, the conversation I heard does not reflect the values and practices to which Laurier aspires. I'm sorry it occurred in the way it did, and I regret the impact it had on Lindsay Shepard. I want to make a very clear statement about freedom of expression at Laurier. Wilfrid Laurier University stands for and supports freedom of expression and academic freedom. Bullshit! Unequivocally. Freedom of expression is core to our values. We live it in our classrooms, in our lecture halls, and in the conversations we have with our students and faculty each and every day. Okay, okay. And it's been that way for a hundred years. At Laurier, Freedom of expression means classrooms that are intellectually challenging. They are filled with critical analysis, civil discourse, and diverse perspectives and identities. As we've mentioned, Laurier is not alone. Some argue that at many universities, it has become increasingly difficult for certain viewpoints to be heard at all.
Jordan Peterson in particular has been a divisive figure, shouted down by protesters at McMaster University. It was about 100 people and there were only about three Aboriginal, well, there's a shock. Someone pulled there's the fire a alarm when shock. he and Rebel Media founder Ezra Levant spoke at the University of Toronto. Laurier cancelled an appearance by Danielle Robitaille, one of the lawyers who represented Jean Gomeshi. A student group said her presence would be threatening for sexual assault survivors and they intended to disrupt the speech. This is going to be a real anti-climax. Um, I had thought... At Middlebury College in Vermont, students turned their backs on controversial author Charles Murray, later drowning out the planned debate. And this is what happened in California when a Berkeley student group invited alt-right figure Milo Yiannopoulos to speak. But there is pushback, and it too is controversial. The University of Chicago now warning freshmen that they'll hear debates and viewpoints that may challenge them and even cause discomfort, adding the school does not support, quote, so-called trigger warnings and safe spaces. Well, I am here to offer you money. I'd like to endow a Department of Nuclear Plant Management. Wonderful. Of course, we can't do nuclear. Our students are highly entitled wusses. You'd be creating a space for violence to happen. Hmm. How about funding a chair in the non-narrative cinema of self-identified pansexuals? What? 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 We also need to hire more deans to decide which Halloween costumes are appropriate. I'm happy that they apologized. You know, I wasn't out for blood. I was never making this a legal battle. I was never um, looking to be crowdfunded. I got offers to be crowdfunded, but I declined because that's not what this is about for me. This is about just making people aware of, of the reality of, of Canadian universities. Um, so, yes, I'm happy that they apologized, but at the same time, I mean, let's acknowledge that this was their only option, and um, they were on the route to self-destruction, because I read, I would say, like, maybe a hundred, maybe more, um, just, like, messages and comments from alumni saying they're going to pull funding, or pull their donations, and people were saying, like, Laurier is a joke not sending my kid there, telling everyone to keep their kids away from Laurier. So, and I think still their, their credibility has taken a hit. Um, so with all that being said, they never offered a long-term solution, okay? So yes, they did some damage control. They offered this these apologies, but it's not like they made a, a long-term commitment like the University of Chicago did with their Chicago principles. It's not like they did anything like that. So, I mean, it's not like they've taken a stance on anything. They're just, like, embarrassed. So is the issue here, and you're saying that you're seeing a lot more political correctness on campus, for example, and, and that can create an atmosphere that's problematic. So what is the risk to students in what appears to be a sort of politically correct environment? Um, it's counterproductive because, you know, the biggest problem I see actually is self-censorship. So, you know, in this case, um, there was actually like institutional intervention and, and an informal complaint and all this, but really what what um, carries along the, the politically correct climate is self-censorship and the being afraid to say something that's kind of against the dominant ideology of, of you know, arts and humanities classes. I know I certainly self-censor and it's, it's kind of counterproductive because you then can't hash out issues and you're just kind of repeating things without really coming to a solution. It is clear to me that the culture of coddling and comforting students has gone too far. Yes. On this side of the street, Alex McEwen is one lone transgender student who came out in support of Shepard. And we need to use that free speech to show other people and discuss openly with them, respectfully, I also belong in this society as much as you do, and we can come to an agreement or agree to disagree. She's passionate. She 
has cute behavior. You should be fucking shamed. She's not you're afraid to look scum. a man in the eyes. You are fucking scum. <laughs> fucking rape apologist, incest supporting, woman hating, fucking scum. Is this someone else taking away? Does she want to follow me? What's there? Fucking scum. Yeah, just no, another. I just, I just want to listen to someone else's opinion. I'm not even on a side here. I just listen to as many people as I can. You know what, though? Why would you pay money to fucking support a fucking rape apologist if you weren't fucking one? He's never going to say anything about Well, it. Watch this. Fucking scum. You have a ticket? Yeah, you should be fucking proud of yourself. These are the fucking men that are going to rape you and your sisters and women in your life. You be fucking ashamed. You're crazy, lady. Is that right? Am I really? Yeah. Maybe so.